What's up guys, my name is Tickno, but here for Troubleshoots. Today I've been going through my old files and I recently came across my old Windows test servers that I've been using for testing out previous programming adventures of mine, etc, etc. Windows 7, 8 and 64. The only issue is, is that I installed these with the VMware Workstation Pro 15 or 14 trial, which lasted 30 days and I haven't touched them since really. But anyways, there is some data I want to get off of these and hey, instead of reinstalling Windows on a new Hyper-V VM, I thought, why don't I just figure out a way to port them across? So inside of here, I've got my Hyper-V virtual machines. As you can see, Hyper-V over here, Windows 10, etc., etc., And they're all located in this folder over here. But I want to move across this VMware Windows 10 64-bit. You can see here's the VMware's disk. There's multiple files and then the rest of these up here. So usually inside of VMware, you'll see something like this, Windows 10 or whatever it is. And then you'll basically have the option to export to an OVF file, which I've actually done with a few of these virtual machines. The only issue is, is that you can't import them directly into the Hyper-V manager. So if I head back to the home of my disk, you can see that there is an OVF file, a VMDK file, and then also this MF file. So the VMDK is the actual disk itself holding all of the data. OVF is just information about the virtual machine and MF, I have literally no clue, but it's tiny. Anyways, how exactly do we get either from OVFs or straight from VMware into the Hyper-V Manager? Well, by giving it a quick Google, you can go across to the first link or any of the links below it, and you'll see them mention the Virtual Machine Converter or converting the hard disk using PowerShell, etc., etc. But if we scroll down here, this is a bit confusing and super difficult to get through. In fact, I gave up on this method entirely. Basically, they don't tell you anywhere really up until you get up to it. You'd select virtual machine, migrate to Hyper-V, uh, log into your Hyper-V, scroll down, scroll down. This file sharing bit was a bit confusing. I've only got one PC and that's why I'm hosting it. And then this is where it completely breaks the source. So specify details to connect to a vCenter server, ESX server or ESXi server. And on the official Microsoft page as well, it also mentions the wizard and it just takes you through the same place and you'll have to log on to the server, which I unfortunately don't have, or at least I don't know anything about. I just have the files and I want to get them across. So before you think all hope is lost, I have in fact got this working and I've transferred across these three virtual machines into these three spots over here. And I'm about to do this fourth one over here with the 64-bit Windows 10 installation. So how exactly do we go about doing this? Well, you don't need VMware installed, so you can go ahead and close that. And you don't need to worry about having only VMDK files or VMware virtual machine files because this will also work with OVF and a bunch of other formats. So the first thing you need to do is head across the link in the description down below, which will take you to the Starwind V2V converter, which is virtual machine to virtual machine. So apparently this will help you switch it from one virtual machine software to another pretty easily. It's a little bit confusing, but I'll guide you through the steps right about now. So just go ahead and hit the download button and fill in your information here. Once you've done that, you'll receive an email with a download link. Opening it up once you've downloaded it will give you the installer. I accept, next, next, install. And then we have it, hit finish. And you'll notice the Starwind V2V image converter icon on your desktop. After double clicking, it gives you this window over here. So from here, we'll pick one of these options. So this is the location of the image to convert. So we'll be picking a local file. Hit next, then we'll find the file. So hit the three dots next to it and then navigate to the folder with it in. Inside my Windows 10x64, you'll see all of the VMDK files. If you have just one OVF file or something like that, simply double click on the virtual disk image, which I think should be VMDK or something similar. If you've exported to OVF, you'll still have this VMDK disk file. Anyways, hit open on the first one without a number after it, SO whatever, whatever. This is the dynamic disk, it's split into multiple files, but sometimes it'll be just one file. Anyways, click on the one without S and numbers after it and hit open. Then you'll see the type of the image and the size of the image. We'll hit next and then we'll say a destination. We can either put it directly into Hyper-V or put it into a different format. However, we'll be putting it directly into Hyper-V. Hit next after selecting Hyper-V virtual server and then we'll just leave this as it is. Otherwise, you'll be transferring it to somewhere over the network. Anyways, hit next and you'll be connected to your own PC. So expanding this, you'll see the virtual machine options that I already have inside of the manager over here. However, we're gonna go ahead and create a new virtual machine. So we'll name it Windows 
10 x 64 vmw for vmware you can name it whatever you want obviously this is just what i'm calling it so under path we'll hit the three dots and we'll pick a destination for it so unfortunately you can't create folders using this window so we'll have to go and make a folder ourselves so new folder windows 10 x 64 vmw minimize and then we can expand and select it there we go. Now that we have it selected, we can go ahead and enter the CPU count. I'll enter 12 because I have this 12 core AMD Ryzen processor with 24 threads. And then the memory is where it gets super finicky. If this isn't a power of two, say 1025, you can see that the OK button is grayed out with no hint as to why. 1024 it works, 1023 it doesn't. So of course you'll have to go ahead and multiply this until you get the amount of RAM that you actually need. So one gig RAM is 1024, multiplying it by eight is 8192. That's eight gigs of RAM. And we'll go ahead and select generation two, though it doesn't really matter. And then Windows and leave the network switch as a default. So the next finicky thing that took me a while to understand was that you can't have spaces or underscores, but you can have hyphens in the computer name up at the top here. Of course, once it's created with no spaces, you can go ahead and rename it later on. So we'll leave it like this for now and we'll hit OK. Hit Next. And then we'll select a VHDX global image. You can select whatever you want, really. Next. And then select the destination for the actual hard disk image file. So we'll go into my folder and we'll just drop it into the base folder that we created over here. So Windows 10 x 64 VMW, it's currently empty, and we'll hit converting. And you can see that it creates some image files and it starts copying across the VHDX that was split into multiple files in our VMware folder. Let's go ahead and wait for this conversion to complete. Once it finishes, it opens up this little promotional page. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And you can see that it's done refreshing. It's taken up about 20 gigs. And inside of here, we just have the information for the Hyper-V virtual machine. Anyways, now that we've done this, we can go back into the Hyper-V manager and you can see that there is the new one that we created over here. So if we quickly head into settings, we can adjust how it works. It's got the right amount of RAM, processors, etc., etc. Seems good. And you can just straight up go ahead, double click it, and hit start and it'll launch like it does in VMware. And you'll see that we get to the login screen after a slightly long little startup sequence over here. It'll say something about couldn't start over IPv4 something or other. You can probably go ahead and change this somewhere in the settings, but after the first launch, it seems to fix itself anyways. So I'm just gonna let this run through. There we go, now it's starting to load fully. We get to pick a resolution and there we have it. Now we're in the logon screen. We can just put in our password. And then we're on the desktop before you even know it. So Windows is functioning basically perfectly at this point. It just need a couple of Windows updates, etc., etc. But anyways, that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Ben Taken Over here for Troubleshoots. And I hope this helps you out because the original method of doing it that's really confusing is really not explained well in a lot of places. And this free program seems to do the job just great. Thank you all for watching. My name is Ben Taken Over here for Troubleshoots. And I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.